Welcome to episode 13 of WFM Labs, a community dedicated to inventing the next generation approach to successfully operating contact centers. Today, I'd like to discuss a topic that I believe is going to revolutionize many industries, including contact centers and customer service. What I'd like to demonstrate today is how we can use artificial intelligence and large language models and integrate this AI with something called data notebooks. Data notebooks allow you to combine code, Python, R, with your data and create very dynamic interactive visuals. The power comes when we take two tools like ChatGPT and a tool like Notable and we bring them together. Most of you are probably familiar with ChatGPT by OpenAI. It's a large language model um, that's getting a ton of press. Uh, it really opens up whole new possibilities for how we can leverage text and translate that text into programming itself is what I'm going to demonstrate today. I'm going to use ChatGPT and then tell Notable how I essentially want to take a set of data in a data notebook and write computer code in Python in order to visualize our data itself. You're not going to see me conduct any coding in Python. I'm simply going to be talking to ChatGPT and ChatGPT is going to be informing Notable about how we want to examine our data. So let's dive in. I've created a, a space on Notable called WFM Labs and Notable you'll see here allows you to put a couple of different types of documents in there. One of them is markdown language so we can actually drop documents into here. I've got a document for you to review on what Jupyter Notebooks are, you know, how ChatGPT comes into place and how we can better collaborate with these tools. In addition, there's a second Notable notebook in here, which also gives you an introduction to Notable. Um, you can read through this at your own leisure. It's got a video in here that explains how Notable works. They're made up of cells. As I mentioned, you can do markdown language. You can put in here Python code and SQL code. The most important aspect is you can graphically uh, visualize your data very easily. You can bring in data via CSV files. It will organize the data and ultimately provides a powerful way to visualize the data that you're working with as well. But let's go back here now and, and bring in some data. I actually wanted to demonstrate this live just to show you how easy it is. Uh, you formulate your data in a CSV format to bring it in the easiest. I've created some fictional data around forecast call volume, uh, forecast handle time, actual call volume, and actual handle time for a year. Um, please abide by the fact that we don't bring in any data that's specific to uh, your company. Uh, we can generate lots of, of false data or uh, other data sets that aren't data sensitive. But um, please don't bring in your own company data directly uh, to Notable Notebooks. To bring it in, you simply drop and drag it uh, after you hit the upload button. And you'll see here I click on the data file itself. It sits here, it digests, it spins it a little bit, and then a moment later, it's got the data all organized nicely. My forecast call volume, my handle time, actual call volume uh, for a full year itself. So with that, I've just imported data. Simple as clicking upload, dropping you know, the data in, and then just verifying that you can see it. So now I'm going to flip over to ChatGPT. And we're going to actually do 90% of our work from ChatGPT. ChatGPT can now be integrated with Notable through a plugin, which I'll demonstrate here. Okay, so flipping over to ChatGPT, I'm using ChatGPT 4 because it has plugins. Um, I'm not going to spend time explaining the plugins themselves, it's pretty easy to research but you do need the Notable plugin and you enable that Notable plugin. Once you've set up your Notable plugin, you just start prompting ChatGPT. 
Um, I've entered uh, some data here on Notable. I'd like to see if you have access to that file. I talk a little bit about the file and I ask it first to see if it can read the data. Um, one of the tricky parts you'll see as you start exploring this is just getting the data set up so that Notable um, with the permissions of the data file can read it. Uh, this is one of the stumbling parts that I had to play around with before it appears that you don't currently have the necessary permissions set up correctly in Notable to access the data. So I go back to my notebook itself in WFM Labs, and it's not under the project setting, but it's actually under the data file itself. If I click on this data file, the sample data of 2022 Essentially, there's a, in the upper right hand corner, there's an area where you can click to share the data. And you do have to play around with these permissions. While I've got it set visible to open for all, I have it all only to the uh, owner of the data. And I need to change that to the contributor. Once I've set that permission correctly, I then go back and ask ChatGPT again. Uh, whether or not it can read the data itself. Now that I've, I've opened it up, I just check to see if it can read it. Uh, and in this particular case, a second problem that um, I've had struggle with, and I left it in this video because you'll probably run into this as well if you try Notable, is it seems to think that the data is sitting in a temp path. Um, in this particular case, my data isn't set in a temporary path. It's just setting in uh, uh, the default path for this particular uh, workspace itself. So I go over here on the far right hand corner, there's three dots. You can go through and take a look at the path and copy that path over, which in this case just doesn't have the temp in front of it. So I also check the name of the file because it said, well, maybe I gave it its wrong name, but the name was correct. So the path is just simply a root path. And now it can read the data. Once you've got here, that's 80% um, of, of getting it up and running. Uh, the rest of it begins playing with the data. You know that it can read the data when it starts to spit back uh, the initial data files itself. It's also um, doing its analysis of, hey, this is what I believe. I'm looking at the forecast call volume of the day, handle time, and such. And then it does some quick statistical analysis on the data. How many records are we looking at? The mean, the minimum, percentiles for the various data itself, and gives a quick summary on the data. The average forecast call volume is around 5,200 calls a day. The actual is slightly lower at 5,171. Average speed of answer, standard deviation, mins and maxes. It actually even does a little quick analysis. I then go and ask it, are there any interesting uh, things that pop out around volume and handle time by the day a week? Any trend data that pops out? And it quickly goes and does an analysis and provides us the graphs and some feedback. Call volume seems to be relatively consistent across different days of the week with some variability. Observation suggests that the day of the week may not have significant impact on call volume. It does a secondary analysis and said, well, let's look at the uh, trend of call volumes and handle time over time. So it generates some nice plot charts right there saying the call volume doesn't the call volume seems to have some variability over time but doesn't appear to be having a clear increasing or decreasing trend average handle time also shows variability it designs these uh, uh, nice charts so that we can eyeball up the volume and the handle time over time so now i basically go and ask if there's any correlation between the higher volume call days and the handle time itself. It goes through, does the analysis again, and comes back and says the correlation between the two is a negative 0.16, which is a pretty weak negative correlation. I ask it to exclude the weekends from the data set and see if there's any trends on call volume over the last 90 days. 
So here, remember, I've plotted out a full year of data, but I just want to look at the last 90 days. And quickly, it's able to isolate that, plot that, and give me a visual again. It gives some analysis around some variability, um, but there doesn't appear to be a clear trend. I ask it to apply Holtz Winters, uh, and say that incorrectly, Holtz Winters instead of Holt Winters, uh, uh, statistical uh, trend analysis to the call volume. It goes ahead, takes the last 90 days, and applies a 21-day forecast projection off my data. And again, gives us a warning that says this forecast is based on the Holt Winters method, um, but uh, uh, gives us a warning about the convergence of the optimization algorithm. Uh, this means this might not be a good model uh, and that we should consider others before we go further. I now basically take it and ask it to give me a projection on 2023 if I'm expecting roughly a 3% increase due to a new client coming into my business. And it goes through and it calculates that, hey, looks like 2023 will be about a million nine calls. That's really not what I wanted. I actually wanted to see the data itself um, by month. And then I also wanted to see the daily data. So I asked it to go back and generate a table that gave me the full year on a daily basis with a 3% increase, and then to break it down on a monthly basis. Again, it gives a disclaimer. These are just based on a 3% increase in daily call volume. I then ask it and says, well, I want to do Monte Carlo simulation on average handle time. Uh, um, so could you do a scatter plot and then a histogram showing me how our average handle time is distributed? And it does so. It scatter plots out the year and gives me a very nice histogram back on average handle time. Uh, and then will also show me uh, the deciles in terms of how average handle time is distributed. Again, this ties back to some of the Monte Carlo simulation stuff that we're talking about now uh, in our last workshop and our upcoming workshop. How do we look at the ranges of values like handle time and distribute that along with how often they show up? Here it's given me my data to show me you know, where handle time lands um, based on all that daily data. So let's go back to our workbook here now. We've explored a lot of data in, in ChatGPT, but the beauty behind this tool in Notable is that Notable's gone back and captured all the work with Python code in the back. I'm not a Python programmer. I know very minimal Python commands. But in the back, essentially, ChatGPT was taking all of my questions and interpreting how to apply Python code to generate the answers that I was looking for. Most importantly, it's logging all of this and creating it as a document that we can then go and publish and share with others. So I've just had a rather deep data analysis in just a very few minutes and created a document that I can effectively publish and share with others. Huge amount of data analysis that now becomes a part of a record that I can go back to. All of us or many of us have used Excel spreadsheets for years and years and years. We have the hundreds if not thousands of Excel spreadsheets on shared drives that we do analysis with. This allows us to take our data, whether it's coming from Excel or from another system, import it into these workbooks themselves, conduct the data analysis on it, and share it within a notable workbook. If I was to try to cut and paste all of that from, from uh, ChatGPT, I'd have all kinds of extra steps to capture my data. But with the integration between ChatGPT and Notable, here I've got a powerful combination. So I'd encourage you, I'm going to share this, uh, this notebook that I've uh, created in Notable so that you can go and look at it yourself. And then I encourage everyone to, to give it a spin, uh, leverage some fake data, load it up, give it a try. I feel it's a pretty powerful way that we can share our data, look at our data, and start to use AI and machine learning 
combination of chat GPT to really go after and empower us to do far deeper analysis with our data sets. A reminder, we have our next workshop coming up on Thursday, June 8th at 7 p.m. Eastern, where we're going to be talking about how to apply a risk rating system to capacity plans that we build out leveraging simulation. A final note on, on this particular session is I'd love to hear from everybody. What types of tools are you using? Are you using other large language models, data notebooks, machine learning to help out in the area of workforce management? We'd love to hear from others. What types of things are you working on? After we move past the risk rated capacity plan uh, session, we're going to start to focus pretty heavily on AI. Um, that's picking up speed at very rapid pace and I believe is going to impact quite a wide range of functions across workforce management and contact centers. Look forward to hearing back from everybody. Hope you enjoyed this session. If you have any questions, feel free to post them uh, below on the link here. Thanks.